Hi, I'm Steve, and welcome to the Maker's Cave. Today, instead of building something, we're going to be repairing something. Mainly, my Ryobi circular saw. It's their uh, 1 plus 18 volt system. Uh, the motor is burned out, and I need to replace it rather than buying a new one. So today, we're going to walk you through exactly how to do that. So keep watching, and I'll show you how to replace that motor. Well, at least I'm hoping I'll show you how to replace the motor. I've never done it before. Here we go. This old ham shack is brought to you by BunkerStuff.com. They carry a full line of customizable and personalized items for the ham radio, storm chasing, fire, and EMS communities. Be sure to visit their website at BunkerStuff.com. Okay, so anyone who's watched any of my videos knows that I'm a real big proponent of uh, Ryobi's one plus 18 volt system. I, my, the, the cave here, the uh, Maker's Cave, has all their tools. I have them out in the shop. I have them here in the workroom. Uh, I have them here at, at work. Uh, so you're probably wondering, gee, if they're that great, why are you replacing the motor? <laughs> Let me tell you why. Because short of putting my fingers through the blade, I did everything you could, shouldn't have done with this saw. First, let's start off with the blade. I don't even know where I got this blade from. Uh, Harbor Freight, maybe? I, I, I don't know. But basically... It's a dinner plate with teeth. It, there, there's got no cut to it whatsoever. I had that in the saw. Next, for the battery, I used their low, uh, low amp battery, which would be perfectly fine, but not only was it the low amp one, it wasn't even charged fully, so it was weak to begin with. Then, let's add all that in with an inch and a half worth of solid wood. So I'm cutting through this wood. The saw's struggling a little. So, you know, I should back off. No, I didn't back off. I just kept going and going because I wanted to get this thing done. It was hot. I was rushing. Um, so I just kept trudging through and eventually, poof, all the smoke came out of the motor and it stopped working. So I thought, oh, okay, this is great. Now there's a good reason to go out and buy their new uh, brushless series. Uh, then I started thinking how often I really use this. Uh, it is valuable. When I need it, I really need it, but I don't use it all that often. So I'm figuring, okay, maybe it's cheaper to replace the motor. So I did some research, and I found the motor. If you can see that. This thing was only $17. Uh, with shipping came to like $22. Much cheaper than either getting a new brush list or even replacing this one with an identical unit. So I figured today what we'll do is we'll go through and we'll replace this motor. Um, being a typical maker, and as my wife would say, a typical man, I looked up no YouTube videos on this, no instructions. I just know there's a bunch of screws on here. We're going to take all the screws out, and we're going to see if we can replace this motor. So we're just going to do this by the seat of our pants to see what happens, and we'll see how long it takes. All right, so here we go. Okay, from what I can tell, these look to be about size 20 torque screws, and hey, I got that right on the first shot. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our little bin here. Keep all those screws in there. That cuts down on the cursing later on during the reassembly. Not that I can't guarantee there won't be any cursing as this project goes on. I don't know if this cover has to come off or not. Right below here is where the motor's at, right? Right here. I probably should have removed this first. Because maybe I can take the motor out while that's taking the rest of the clamshell case out. No. Here's the back of the motor. Two uh, soldered in leads. So it looks like I do have to continue with taking this half of the clamshell off. I think that was the last of them. Nope, oh, nope. Angle the plate away, and it comes right off. Screws over there, case over there, clamshell over here. So, so what we have here is the motor. It looks like it's screwed into a gear housing. Let's see if you can see that. So it looks like I need to take this gear housing off. 
And that is a Phillips. All right, yep. There's the gear housing. You got some grease around there. It's a little dirty with some wood debris, which is all dust. So I think I'm gonna put this back in here. And it's probably pretty hard for you to tell, but it's pretty dark in there. It's uh, a lot of burnt pieces. Yeah, and it smells burnt. I'm gonna put this back in here. This will be a good stand for us to use while we desolder. Butane solder, just gotta wait for it to warm up a little. Commercial solder is, takes a real high heat. So sometimes it takes a while. So, we're gonna turn the soldering iron off and we're gonna try something different. Look at that, they're unsoldered. All right, so now we're gonna take this out, put this away up here, and now we're gonna use, there's two screws right here that hold the, well it looks like, they hold the gearbox to the motor. Let's just, yeah, because the motor actually came with two new screws. Okay, that's out. Well, that was easy. Now we'll put this back in. It's a little hard for you, I don't know if you can tell or not, but if you can see in there, all the fins and everything are all shiny and Mainly they're all white, which means they haven't been burnt from doing stupid stuff. Okay, they did put a nice indicator here that this is the positive, so I know which goes which. So now I just need to get these solder on here because I'm going to bend these up a little bit so it's easy for me to get to. Get some wire strippers and some solder. First thing we're probably going to do is tin these up a little bit. Butane soldering iron, really handy. Especially if you're in the ham radio when you're out in the middle of that field and you need to redo that antenna connection. All right. on there. Get these tinned up.
I love electronics, but soldering is the bane of my existence. I just am not a good solderer, so I can't believe that wire went on there so quick. So what that means is this next connection, the ground, is probably going to fight me all the way in. Use my special flux applicator, also known as a screwdriver. And we're going to take this, I'll load this up with some solder, and see how bad I can do here. And amazingly, didn't do that bad. <laughs> okay, it's done. There's nobody more surprised than me that that soldering went that easy. Okay, so soldering's all done. Put this sleeve back up. This little thing is the where the battery slides in. It makes the connection. Got to make sure that is sitting right. All right, so we got all the screws in. It's mounted. It's soldered. Now just put the clamshell back on. It's kind of tough for you guys to see in there. These are the two connectors for the battery that we were just looking at. They are where they should be. So now, <laughs> if you're wondering why I just hesitated, is I saw these two black screws laying on the desk and I said, uh-oh, where were they supposed to go? But they were to the old motor. So we're at about 22 minutes right now. And we've been, if I was not doing a video, I'd be a little farther along. Because before I put all these screws back in, I want to make sure the thing works. Get a battery. Alright, put the battery in. Well, devil hates a coward. works. Now we can go through and using the right tool tighten up all these Torx screws. Put the motor cap back on. Motor cap does not seem to be going on. Something's fighting it. Motor end sits in this recessed cup right here. I just had the two wires too close together. Now it fits right on. Bring the plate back to 90 degrees. And there you have it. Put the battery back in. So there you go. Half hour. You got to take out 10 minutes for fiddling around with the camera and talking to you guys. Let's try it again.
Okay, so for $22, I was able to fix this burnt up Ryobi tool that I destroyed. Uh, part of their one volt uh, or one plus 18 volt system. Uh, much cheaper than going out to buying a new one. We learned several valuable lessons in this. One is always use a sharp, good blade. And two, when your tool is talking to you, much like your wife, you really should listen. Because this tool told me numerous times, hey, you're pushing me, and I didn't listen. And there you go, $22 later, and a smoked motor. So if you like this video, be sure to hit uh, the like button below. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And be sure to hit the bell so you know when more videos come out. we got some other fun videos coming up. So until then, this is Steve. Thanks for visiting us here in the Maker's Cave, and I'll see you soon.